Welcome to Heart Matters, everyone. We're so glad that you've joined us. In Mark chapter 5, verse 19 of the Bible, Jesus says to tell people of the wonderful things that God has done for you and how merciful He has been. And while that's our goal here at Heart Matters, each week we are honored to feature special guests who are willing to share how God has been merciful in their own lives. On today's show, we are joined by Warren Blanford and his granddaughter, Danielle, as they recount of a horrible accident that they survived and how prayers and their own personal faith in God made all the difference. Also joining us as our musical guests, we have Greg and Rebecca Bowers. Once again, thanks for tuning in and enjoy the show. all hope I will believe raging wars to fight for peace you have always made a way a path of beauty you create and I know your love is strong Your love, it pays away. 
Climate Matters will return in just a moment. Closed captioning has been provided by H. Bruce Home Inspections. For more information, call 709-571-0152. Looking for a sweet treat? Baking supplies, vitamin supplements, or other special ingredients? Then stop by Nan's Pantry in the Gander Mall. Nan's Pantry has everything you're looking for. From envelopes to tractor trailer loads, Dooley's Trucking caters to all your shipping needs. Capable of meeting all your shipping requirements throughout Newfoundland. Dooley's Trucking is your choice for fast and efficient delivery. Ship with the best. Ship Dooley's. Terry's Tents, specializing in custom canvas products, picture framing, embroidery, and printing. Also carrying a wide variety of craft supplies, fabrics, leathers, and furs. Located at 326 Hamilton River Road in Happy Valley Goose Bay. My name is Warren Blanford. Uh, I live in Brown's Arm. Originally born in Fogo. Um, this is my granddaughter. Um, I'm 14 years old. I was born in Gander, but we moved to Fort McMurray when I was five years old, and uh, we've been there for about 10 years now. We come down every summer for vacation. We usually come down and like like to pick berries and go on quad rides and go swimming. I retired uh, <coughs> at the end of, uh, uh, end of March 2015. Uh, that's when we uh, decided to uh, move back to Newfoundland again. Yeah. We arrived in Newfoundland uh, on uh, the 10th day of May of 2015. And the 10th day of July was uh, the day my uh, world and life changed. I was down on vacation. It was like the 1st of July when we got here. It was 10 days into my vacation where um, we just wanted to go swimming and have a good summer. And we got up that morning and wanted to go down to a creek behind the house. So we just stayed on, the, on a little oak clearing there and uh, sat down and had our lunch and decided to come back to the house again. I decided to uh, to go for a bike ride. I did. I asked my grandson first if he wanted to go for a ride with me, and he said, "Well, Poppy said, what are you going in?" I said, "Well, my motorcycle." No, he said, "I'm not going." I jumped off the couch and was like, "I want to go." Pulled out of the driveway, and we were going to Tim Hortons to get coffee, and Mom and Nan were staying home and cooking supper. We left Tim Hortons uh, driving back home, uh, driving through the town of Lewisport. When the vehicle uh, backed out from a business there, uh, did a U-turn in the road and kind of T-boned us. Seconds is all it is all it took, uh, you know, for your life to to change. I remember the impact. Uh, don't remember a whole lot after that. I must probably went unconscious for uh, just a few seconds. I saw my bike was was right there beside me. I was sitting, actually sitting on the road. Um, I couldn't see any right foot. I saw my leg there, and every time the heart beat, you would you would see a gush of blood flow from my leg. So I grabbed my jeans like this to try to try to tighten it on my leg. I was losing that much blood. You know, my life was just zapping away. I didn't even think that I would even survive that the amount of blood flowing out of me. Then I looked over to my right. I saw my granddaughter lying on the road.
what I call an angel, a paramedic that was home on uh, leave from Mushrat Falls. She heard the impact and came running. And uh, there were all kinds of people around her, certainly and they got belts from people and I tied off my leg. The paramedic said, we can't find a pulse. We can't find a pulse. And then there was, uh, I think there was five or six people that gathered around her and actually led out in prayer. And uh, a few minutes, a few moments later, and you heard the words, I, I have a pulse, I have a pulse. That prayer uh, was, was really what brought me back to life. And uh, God having that uh, paramedic there uh, was an, another instrument. But the, you know, the most important part of that was, was prayer. I felt the impact of the car and all I can remember is just going through the air, waking up on the pavement, and this lady was above me, and um, she was right there behind us in the accident. She was the car driving behind us, and she got out and was asking my name and trying to distract me and get my mom's number, and I was really confused at that time. I didn't know, like, where I was. I didn't like because we were on vacation, I didn't know anyone around me. And I looked over and saw my grandfather on the road and just heard that um, he didn't have a pulse. And it really scared me because I wanted to see him because I thought I wasn't gonna see him again. And they were covering my ears and trying to not let me hear, hear what they were saying about him, that he wasn't gonna make it. I didn't know anybody, but I knew God was there with me, and he was holding my hand through it all. Driving into, uh, driving into uh, Gander, in the, am in the ambulance, uh, I, uh, I used to come to uh, periodically, and uh, I remember letting those vicious screams out of me, and uh, looking up, I saw those two bags of fluid that this lady was there with her two hands, squeezing these two intravenous bags is what it was, trying to get enough fluid in me to keep me alive. And uh, the last remembrance I have is when, actually when the ambulance landed at the hospital. Uh, I don't remember anything after that. Uh, that was a Friday that happened. And um, Sunday, I think Sunday was when I uh, when I came to again. When I woke up in the hospital, and, uh, my wife was there, and uh, she said, "Well, you know, your leg is gone." And I was actually trying to write out a name on my uh, on my belly. What I was saying, trying to say, was, "How was Danielle?" Up at that point, I didn't know how she was or where she was or what her injuries was. I had a big like fixator on my leg and they drilled pins, the metal rods in for about four months, healing a lot faster than him, but it was still really hard, you know, trying to like find that new normal for a little while. So I had to be put in a wheelchair for my grade seven year of school for most of it. There's never a moment, uh, really, that uh, I'm without, without pain. Uh, it's bearable, it's, it's phantom pain, ghost pain they call it. Uh, you're feeling uh, pain in a, a part of your, put, your foot that's actually not there. Uh, the first few, uh, few weeks coming home from the hospital uh, was uh, was a very, very trying time. But prayer got us through. Prayer got us through. I feel like the hardest part for me was um, I went out into the garage and saw the motorcycle there. And most of the damage was done to where I was sitting. So if my grandfather didn't put his leg back to protect me, 
it would have been me. God helped me forgive myself and, you know, like helped me get through that. And in the hospital, um, people would come in with cards and like, we're praying for you cards and we're thinking of you and stuff like that. And I never really thought of it much before that, but when someone says they're praying for you, that is the most powerful thing that they can do for you. Like, I can't imagine not knowing God going through that because even when you didn't have someone there, he was there for you. I was sitting there on the road, uh, no way near a conscious state to even call out to God at that time. Wouldn't be a good idea to wait until that moment uh, to uh, get in touch with God. And in a short instant, one second, one second is all it takes. You shouldn't really take moments for granted because in that second, like if me and my brother were fighting or I, you know, I didn't listen to my mom or something, that could have been the last time I saw them. You know, if I got into a fight with my brother before I left that house, it could have been the last time I saw him. There might not be a tomorrow, and there might be, but why not? have God in your life, why not have Jesus as your savior? You can't put it off. Today, today is the day of salvation. Here at Heart Matters, we love hearing from you, our viewers. Perhaps you've really enjoyed a particular episode or you have a suggestion for an upcoming show. Well, there's a couple of ways that you can get in contact with us. You can drop by our website at Heart Matters TV and send us a message directly through the website. You can also write us through Facebook where we post weekly updates that keep you informed about upcoming episodes. And of course, Heart Matters can be followed on Twitter using the handle Heart Matters NL and on Instagram at Heart Matters TV. Still to come on today's show, To the Point with Ralph Benson and more music from Greg and Rebecca Bowers when Heart Matters returns. Remax would like to say thank you for allowing us to be a part of the most important transaction of your life. Our mandate is giving back to the communities that serve us. We will be honored to help you with your next move. Call any of our offices today and let one of our Remax agents go to work for you. Looking for quality products and top-notch service? From lumber to paint and refrigerators to sofa, your local Notre Dame home furnishings and Notre Dame Castle Building Centers can help you complete your home, serving you from 16 locations across Newfoundland and Labrador, six days a week. Scott's Transport Limited is a family-owned and operated full transportation company located in beautiful Deer Lake. In business for over 25 years and with a fleet of modern equipment and dedicated team, we service the growing needs of businesses from Newfoundland and Labrador to Ontario and locations in between. If it matters to you, it matters to us. I was walking this path the other day and the words to the song, Long and Winding Road, came to my mind. I'm sure most everyone has heard that song by the Beatles. The simple title speaks for itself. There seems to be no end to the road and you're tired. When will this ever end? The Long and Winding Road started out as a simple McCarthy ballad, written in Scotland in 1968 at a time in which the cracks in the Beatles' relationships were becoming ever deeper. Some of the lyrics of the song speak for itself as well. It says, many times I've been alone and many times I've cried. You'll never know the many ways I've tried, but still they lead me back to the long winding road. Songs such as this express the longing of the human heart 
to find the answer to life. I know what it's like to be on that road. You feel empty, tired, many questions, no answers. I've also known people who knew God. However, they made some crazy choices which led them back to that long and winding road. Yet they can never forget the road that they once knew. Johnny Cash, I believe, expressed it very well in the song called Sunday Morning Coming Down. The lyrics are, Well, I woke up Sunday morning with no way to hold my head that didn't hurt. And the beer I had for breakfast wasn't bad, so I had one more for dessert. Then I fumbled in my closet through my clothes and found my cleanest dirty shirt. Then I washed my face and combed my hair and stumbled down the stairs to meet the day. Then I walked across the street and caught the Sunday smell of someone frying chicken. And Lord, it took me back to something that I lost somewhere, somehow along the way. On a Sunday morning sidewalk, I'm wishing, Lord, that I was stoned, because there's something in a Sunday that makes a body feel alone. There's nothing short of dying that's half as lonesome as the sound of the sleeping city sidewalks and Sunday morning coming down. Do you stumble down the stairs to meet today? Do you feel like you have lost something along the way? The Beatles song says, after trying many doors, still they lead me back to the long winding road. The Bible talks about that long road. It's a road which leads to death, but it also tells of another road and this road leads to life. Which road are you on? The long and winding road without God is a lonely road. Have you tried everything, but nothing satisfies? The answer is Christ alone. He is the way. He leads to the door of life. Jesus came to give you life. And I want you to know that the only path to pleasure is in pleasing God. His invitation to you is come unto me and I will give you rest. What you lost somewhere along the way, you can have again. The heavy burden of sin that you carry can be lifted. He is a God of grace and forgiveness. Why don't you decide for Christ and get off that long and winding road today? heart cannot be strong on the line of lies we see. We're connected to these fickle things, the truth shallow and bleak. My mind cannot be held by the pleasures that are free. Soaking up toxicity that leaves me suffering. For all the things that I may want, for all the things I call my own. Fruit of where my happiness, so my happiness flows. I lay it down on the altar for the glory of the Maker. such as mine and a piece of faith that I can't see by any 
anything that's bound to die. No longer will I praise these idols that the world prizes so high. Lips and soul know one who bled and died. call my own the fruit of where my happiness all my happiness flows I lay down on the altar for the glory of the maker the creator my father all things that I may want all things I call my own the fruit of where my happiness all my happiness flows I lay it down on the altar For the glory of the maker The creator My father Oh, 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 oh Oh, 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 oh. My father Oh, 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 oh treated right belongs to the one above not being touched by hands that describe themselves as love When you begin to see God as a loving Father and not as a judgmental ruler, your whole perspective changes. Jesus is not only approachable, but he's longing to have a close, intimate relationship with you. We were reminded by Warren and Danielle that life is short and it can easily be taken from us in a moment. Don't wait to start a relationship with Jesus. Not only could it be too late to make that decision, but you'll also be missing out on a full and meaningful life right now. I want to thank Warren and Danielle, as well as Greg and Rebecca for being with us today. Now, if you have a suggestion for a guest that you'd like to see on our program, then drop by our website and let us know about it. Until next time, I'm Mike Freak, and thanks for watching.